what up guys, welcome back to my blockchain channel and today we're going to talk about a, a problem that Ethereum has and that Bitcoin has and that a lot of other blockchain networks have and uh, so this problem is performance and scale because currently all the transactions and all the calculations that, that are performed on Ethereum uh, so these calculations need to be run by all of the nodes. So each node has to perform each calculation. And that is, of course, not scalable. If we want Ethereum to become adopted worldwide, if we want to build applications such as Facebook, such as YouTube, and if we want to run them on Ethereum, uh, we need to sp speed up the pro process. We need to have more operations per second uh, compared to today's uh, numbers and so today we have maybe 15 operations per second in ethereum and if you think about it that's what computers had back in the 80s this uh, operations per second number so it's really unsustainable and there are different proposals on how we can increase of, of the performance and improve the scalability of the system. So let's talk about it. The first proposal is uh, increasing the block size. The second proposal is to make users use different altcoins. And the third proposal is sharding. And we will talk the most about sharding. And wh when we're done with uh, this topic, we'll talk about uh, a more uh, personal topic that I want to talk to you about, guys. So if you're interested in that, keep watching until the end. So let's get into it, guys. Uh, so we have uh, the first proposal, and that is uh, uh, increasing the block size. And uh, so increasing the block size would uh, increase the performance. Uh, all the nodes would still need to perform all of the calculations. However, with increased block size limit, we, we could have more transactions uh, performed in, uh, in the same amount of time. So it's not a solution where you solve this issue with all the nodes calculating all of the operations. This is still a problem. However, we do increase performance by increasing the number of transactions each, um, each node can process in one go. And so this would increase the performance. However, we can't we can't uh, increase the block size indefinitely because uh, well, if we increase the block size indefinitely, it will become harder and harder for the nodes to to process uh, the blocks. And uh, a very important thing for decentralization is. Uh, uh, is that regular people should be able to run a node on their laptops. Anyone should be able to run a node on his or her laptop. And if we continue increasing the block size, it will be more difficult for a normal computer to, to act as a node because it would s simply be too slow and uh, it, it wouldn't be enough the hardware wouldn't be enough to act as a node. And therefore we cannot increase the block size indefinitely because we risk, we face the risk of centralization. We face the risk of centralization where uh, only a few people who have uh, supercomputers are able to uh, process the uh, blocks. And so therefore we cannot increase the block size indefinitely. However, in the short term, we could increase the block size. And so that could be a solution, but only in the short term. Sooner or later, this new increased block size would be too, too small once again. And then we need to increase again. So it's not a sustainable solution. However, it's a short term fix that could work. So that was the proposal number one. And Bitcoin is uh, debating this uh, a question right now should they increase the block size or should they not increase the block size and the problem with increasing the block size guys is also that you would need to do a hard fork and when you do a hard fork you you risk splitting the community because if not everyone upgrades to the new version you have two separate coins and that is not the situation that you you're looking for so 
Yes, you could increase the block size, however, it's not sustainable and you would also need a hard fork. The solution number two is to have uh, people use altcoins for different purposes. So maybe we don't need to run all of the computations on a single blockchain. Maybe we can have several blockchains and maybe one application is running on this blockchain and then another application is running on other blockchain. And uh, this way we don't have one single blockchain that gets over overloaded. And so this would, of course, be good for performance, but it would be bad for security, guys, because we want to have as much hashing power as possible in one blockchain, because with one, if we have uh, a substantial hashing power in a single blockchain, it would be harder to hack and to get uh, and to pull off the 51% attack. However, if we have many blockchains and all of them have a portion of the total hash power in all of the blockchains, then of course it's easier to hack in every individual blockchain compared to a large blockchain where all, the, all of the hashing power is combined. So, as we can see, this solution is not really viable either because we would improve the performance that is true however we would we would compromise security we don't want to split up the hashing power or the currency in different uh, in different blockchains so hashing power would be in a proof of work uh, scenario and currency would be in a proof of stake scenario we want to have a big blockchain with all of the hashing power and currency in one single system and so the final proposal that people are talking about is sharding. So maybe you've heard about Ethereum sharding and you didn't really know what, what, it, me what it meant. Uh, so Ethereum sharding is a way to parallelize the computation. And so uh, the block, if we increase the block size limit, it doesn't really solve the issue with uh, the whole uh, sequential execution uh, situation because right now we have sequential execution all of the nodes need to calculate all of the operations however in with sharding the idea is that some of the nodes could do calculation a and other nodes could do calculation b and so we we split up the calculation into calculations into several parts uh, or the set of calculations into several parts. And the idea is to split up the state of the blockchain into several subdomains. Uh, and, the, and such a subdomain would be called a shard. And so we might have three different shards and users on, on each or in, inside each of these shards would not be able to communicate with users in the other shards. So, so that is really a problem with charging. When you have different shards and you split up the Ethereum uh, state into several subdomains, and the, these subdomains are, are called shards. So when you do that, we have a situation where all of the users and all of the applications in a single chart wouldn't be able to communicate with uh, users and applications in another chart and when i say they wouldn't be able to uh, i mean that they wouldn't be able to in the sense that they are able to in, when we have only one uh, blockchain and one well uh, only one shard uh, uh, more correctly uh, so it w they would still be able to interact however it would require a special mechanism so if you have a user in chart a and so he wants to interact with an application in chart B. Uh, this would require a special mechanism. So it's not as easy as interacting with users and applications in a single chart. And guys, as you can imagine, this would also make the life harder for developers. Because instead of thinking in terms of uh, a single domain, a single chart, where we can interact and... Uh, transact with all of the users and all applications developers would be uh, would be required to think about in terms of different shards and whenever 
we want to do a transaction transaction from shard A to shard B, we would require to uh, launch the special uh, interaction with, uh, with uh, people and applications in another chart. So that could be a problem for developers. However, I know that Ethereum uh, Foundation, they are trying to abstract this whole mechanism away from the developers. So you as a developer wouldn't even notice that applications and users are on different charts. However, it's all still in the development. And um, uh, charting is a very hard uh, uh, mission for the foundation to solve. And so it's not really clear how it would play out. However, th there is this problem that it could make life difficult for developers. Uh, but I know that uh, Ethereum Foundation are trying to fix uh, this by making it uh, making an interface to developers such that when developers do uh, program decentralized applications, they don't really need to care about the whole complexity with charging and all of that that is behind this interface. So it would be really interesting to see how how it plays out. So guys, let's um, let's recap. We we can to improve uh, performance, what we can do, we can increase the block size. However, that is not really viable in the long run because all the nodes need to be able to process all of the transactions, all, all of the blocks. And so if we increase the block size, it will become harder and harder for a node to process these transactions. And we don't want to, we, we don't want a situation where we need supercomputers to process uh, blocks. We want everyone to be able to process uh, blocks and to act as a node. And so the second proposal was to make people use altcoins and uh, different blockchains for different applications. And that would increase the performance. However, guys, however, that would make the whole blockchain less secure because the hashing power would be distributed uh, in different blockchains. So it would be easier for an attacker to get 51% in one of these blockchains. And the third proposal is to implement sharding, where we try to parallelize uh, the calculations so that maybe we have one application in shard A and another application in shard B. Uh, and that would increase the performance. However, it makes it hard for people and applications in one shard to communicate with people and applications in another shard. So that's a problem. And uh, we, we could have a situation where it would be difficult to program apps in such an environment where you need to think about different charts. So I really hope that Ethereum Foundation comes up with a solution where developers don't need to care about charts. The charts are implemented, but they are under, underneath. Uh, and developers only interact with a simple interface. However, it's still all under development, so we will have to see, guys. So that's it for the first part with uh, performance and scalability. And uh, so on, on, on this personal topic, I just wanted to thank all of you guys who are commenting and asking questions. I've received a lot, lot of positive uh, feedback during the last couple of weeks and it's uh, it's really exciting and it's fun for me to read your comments and uh, read your appreciation so that is that is awesome guys thank you for writing and please continue writing i like reading your comments and answering so that is it for today uh, and if you are a new viewer and you like blockchain and you like cryptocurrencies you like technology you should definitely to subscribe subscribe to this channel because you will find it interesting i myself am a software developer and i post videos every single day guys so today we talked about charging sharding and <laughs> making the blockchain faster i'll see you guys tomorrow